Welcome back to the course on Analyzing or Processing for Music Applications. This is the Transformations Week, the week uh, that we talk about uh, the potential of the spectral modeling approaches we have been discussing in the past uh, few weeks for the application of manipulating sounds, of uh, transforming different aspects of sounds. And in these uh, programming uh, lectures, I want to go over some of the code of the SMS tools uh, package that implement uh, these transformations. So in this uh, lecture, I want to explain the STFT transformation, so the file that implements um, some very uh, basic transformations using the STFT. So we'll be uh, basically implementing this uh, block diagram in which uh, after the analysis of a sound uh, in a particular frame where we have the magnitude and the phase of uh, uh, sound, we can apply some transformations uh, to this uh, spectral data before we actually uh, do the inverse uh, Fourier transform and uh, resynthesize basically uh, a new uh, sound. So let's uh, go uh, to a script that I wrote that uh, makes a very simple operation on one single DFT uh, of a sound on one frame. So we'll be doing uh, some filtering to one particular frame. Okay, so we'll be using this uh, sound, the oboe sound. And so after importing all the models and, uh, and packages that uh, we need, we read the sound file, the oboe sound file, into the array X. Then we, uh, well, with the, the, we get a window, uh, a Hanning window with a given size. Here we have the same uh, size for the window and the one that we'll be using for the FFT, uh, N. Okay, and then we just uh, take one fragment of, uh, of the oboe sound, uh, 512 samples, uh, the size that uh, we have defined. Okay, and then uh, we also define a filter. Okay, and uh, the concept of defining a filter in the frequency domain is basically defining uh, a shape uh, in dB scale, because we're going to be applying uh, in, the, in the dB scale, that will be added to the spectrum of the original signal. So it has to be a smooth shape. Uh, we don't uh, want to have very uh, jacked or and, uh, strong discontinuities that will create uh, distortion. So in fact, what uh, we are defining here is uh, a filter that is in fact the shape of a humming window. So we're going to be designing a humming window as a filter in the frequency response. And in order to apply it in, uh, in dB, uh, we uh, multiply it by uh, minus 60 so that we have a shape. In fact, this is an invert uh, humming window. Uh, so this will be used to do basically a band stop filter. So we're going to um, uh, attenuate uh, certain frequencies uh, using this shape. But we're gonna see that uh, by plotting these curves. Then we take uh, the magnitude and phase spectrum of the signal that we chose. And in order to apply the filter, we basically decide where we're going to apply the filter. The filter is uh, 30 uh, samples long, so we're going to affect 30 samples of the spectrum. And we decide that it's going to be, the center is going to be uh, the sample 40. And then now we copy the input uh, spectrum to uh, this MY, and we're going to manipulate, or we're going to change the 15 samples around this uh, 40th sample. So the filter will be applied to the 30 samples that are around the, this uh, 40th position. And then we do the inverse uh, uh, DFT. Okay, so let's uh, run this code first. Uh, we are in this uh, directory in the workspace, so we can just run test. Okay, so we have executed this script. Now we can keep uh, plotting the different things. So we first can plot the waveform that we are going to be computing the DFT off. So this is the windowed uh, fragment. Okay. Uh, we can plot uh, the filter. So if we plot uh, the filter, 
Okay, this is the shape that we're going to be apply, applying. So in fact, it uh, already attenuates uh, because it's a humming window. So there is a step here, so it doesn't start at zero. And since we have subtracted 60 to it, it goes down to 60 and then goes up uh, again. Okay, so this is going to be the shape, the 30 samples that are going to be applied into a magnitude spectrum. Then the magnitude spectrum that uh, we're going to be using is uh, this, okay, this is the OBO spectrum of, uh, well, uh, 256 samples, the magnitude spectrum, the positive values. And now the modified version, well, let's uh, maybe uh, we can even uh, plot here on top of this the modified one. So we can plot the MY spectrum here. Okay, so this uh, green spectrum is the modified version in which everything is the, ex uh, the same except this middle part. This is the part where we applied the window and it clearly uh, was uh, affected very little at the, at the boundaries and very much at the center. So we applied a smooth uh, shape and therefore we did a band stop filter. We kind of uh, reduced, attenuated the frequencies that are around this area and of course then we obtained at, uh, the output sound which is the Y signal okay this is the modified input signal so in fact if we plot on top of this the original signal okay the green one is the original signal and of course the blue one has been attenuated and is the shape is quite different because we have attenuated certain frequencies uh, much more than others. Okay, so this is a filtering operation that can be easily uh, done. And then in the STFT transformations uh, file that is within the transformations directory, uh, we can find this uh, code, the STFT filtering, uh, as it's implemented to be applied for a whole sound. So in fact, it's the same idea. This is the definition of the function in which the input is the input sound, sampling rate, the window, FFT size, and hop size, and then we pass it this filter, which is an array that is going to be uh, applied to the magnitude spectrum. And then, uh, basically, the core is this uh, while loop that does exactly what we uh, have uh, been showing for one particular frame. It performs the DFT, it applies the filter, and then it applies uh, the uh, inverse DFT. Okay, now let's talk about another operation that I believe is a little bit more interesting, which is uh, the morphing that uh, we talked about. So in this script, we're going to be morphing two sounds, the sound of a rain with the soprano uh, sound, but again, one frame. Okay, in order to do this morphing, what we're going to do is apply the magnitude spectrum of one into the other, or basically interpolating the two uh, magnitude spectra. How do we do that? Well, we do exactly the same things that uh, we did for one single sound. We, uh, we define the window, we choose uh, these uh, two fragments, the, they have to be, in this case, the same size, because we're going to be uh, applying uh, the, the same operation on both uh, sounds, we're going to be interpolating the two magnitude spectra, so this, they, they, we have to start from the same uh, window size, or at least uh, then they have to be of the same size. Then we take the two uh, spectra the, uh, of the two sounds, of uh, sound one and sound two, and the, the core part of the, of the morphing is in this uh, next section. So what we're going to do is uh, have one smooth version of one sound so that we only apply uh, a, the general shape of one sound into the other and uh, so that's uh, going to be the uh, the second sound is going to be the one to be smooth by one given factor 0.2 so we use the resampling the kind of the down sampling aspect to obtain a smoother version of uh, the x2 spectrum and then we upsample it again to, with interpolation to get uh, the complete spectrum with a, a smoother uh, representation. Of course, we can just uh, have no smoothing by putting a value of 1. 
and then we're going to basically combine the two, a linear combination of the two. We, we are uh, uh, in a dv scale, so we can just add them, otherwise we would multiply them, in which there is this balance factor that defines how much of each is in the, in the mix, basically. In this uh, 0.7, it means this 0.7 is applied to uh, the second sound, and uh, the rest of so 0.3 is applied to the first sum. And then, of course, we take the inverse uh, DFT from the resulting uh, magnitude spectrum with the phase of the first uh, signal. Okay, so the phase will be of the first signal, and the magnitude spectrum is a combination of the two. Okay, let's run this again. Uh, let's run uh, test one. Okay, and now let's keep uh, showing the different uh, uh, sort of variables that we have. Let's start with the magnitude spectrum. So let's plot the magnitude spectrum of uh, sound one, MX1. Okay, and well, we had it open, so we have to close it here and let's open it again. Okay, so this is the magnitude spectrum of the rain sound, so it's quite noisy. Uh, it's of course it, uh, it decays in the high frequencies, uh, so the low frequencies are stronger, but it uh, decays as the frequencies go up. And the, we can plot on top of that the second spectrum, which is this uh, soprano voice, which is clearly different. A uh, soprano voice has uh, these uh, very uh, clear shapes, which relate to the formants. We are not so interested in this type of morphing uh, to get a good resolution on the harmonics. We are interested in the general shape. Okay, And now uh, we can plot uh, on top of this the smooth version of the second. So we applied a smooth factor of 0.2. So MX2 smooth 2 is the interpolated so version of that. So if we put MX2 smooth uh, 2, uh, that's going to be the smooth version of this speech, uh, of this voice sound. Okay, so now this is the, the, the red line is the one that will be interpolated with the blue line. Okay, and now uh, with the balance 0.7, the resulting spectrum is MY that also can be plotted on top of this. So MY okay, will be now is this uh, uh, blue line and it's clearly an interpolation between the two. So since it's 0.7, it's closer to the red line to, than to the blue line. If we had instead of 0.7, we had let's say 0.2 or 0.1, let's, uh, and let's save that and let's uh, run the test one again, and now if we plot on the same uh, plot the MY, okay, now is this uh, purple uh, curve, and it clearly is much closer to the rain sound because we have specified 0.1. Okay, so hopefully that gives you an idea of this idea of interpolating between two magnitude spectrum. And of course, then when we uh, plot y, the output, this uh, will be the resulting fragment of the sound that uh, captures this uh, interpolation or this morphing aspect. And if we go to the STFT transformations, and uh, there is another function that performs that for a whole sound, the STFT morph. Okay, so STFT morph receives two sounds, x1 and x2, and here we have uh, the possibility of controlling windowing uh, differently, and then there is the smooth and the balance, and it does exactly what I showed in, uh, in the case of uh, two uh, individual frames. Okay, and now uh, we can show uh, the, the file that uh, basically is the one that is called from the uh, the interface, the transformation interface, that has one function main, and that it uh, uh, receives two sounds and plots the 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 spectrum and it plots the resulting uh, morphing. So um, it uh, it has some default parameters, 
and it does all the things that we have been uh, doing so basically for the whole sound so it reads the sounds it gets the windows and then it performs the uh, STFT uh, analysis for the whole sound and then it does the morphing uh, between uh, the, the two sounds in this case uh, the STFT is done so that we can visualize uh, the spectrum of uh, the signal okay and then uh, we use the morphing and we do again the analysis of the output sound so we can uh, visualize the spectrum of the input and the output sound uh, in the in the plots and then it writes the resulting sound files okay so we can import this uh, this file so the stft uh, morph function oh we can import it as a name with for example st and now we can uh, call this uh, main and of course we can change the parameters so the default parameters were ocean sound with this speech mail with this particular window so for example let's change the valence so now it was 0.2 so it was closer to the ocean than to the speech mail let's uh, make it so that uh, the balance of f is uh, very much close to the speech let's type it right balance oh come on balance okay f uh, and let's put uh, for example 0.9 okay and let's run this okay so now we have uh, the input sound the spectrogram of the input sound and this is the spectrogram of the output sound okay and then the actual output sound so clearly here the output sound has captured quite a bit of the shape of the speech so if we uh, can play it, it has saved a file into this directory. So we can just uh, type play and ocean uh, stft more. Do you hear me? They don't lie at all. Okay, so clearly it has taken the duration of the, of the ocean sound because that's the, the basic sound from which uh, we are taking uh, the analysis from and then the magnitude spectra has been modified by this uh, smooth spectra of the speech male sound uh, okay and that's all i wanted to say um, so we have uh, seen how uh, within the sms tools there is all this code for being able to do morphing uh, between two sounds using the short time for it transform and the code is quite simple in fact, uh, is uh, the, maybe the simplest type of transformation that we can do with these spectral tools. And it uh, can be quite uh, useful and interesting uh, for quite a few uh, types of uh, applications. So that was all. Um, this is the first programming lecture. So in the, in the next one, we will uh, talk about the sinusoidal model, how to implement transformations in the sinusoidal model using uh, the, these uh, same uh, SMS tools and the particular code uh, that implements uh, them. So I see you next class. Bye-bye.